in this part we will discuss the rotational dynamics for the system of particles here for rotational dynamics uh, we begin with the fundamentals the rate of change of the momentum is caused by the resultant of forces acting on the ith particle plus the summation of all the internal forces due to the other particles acting on the ith particle so this equation is for the ith particle in rotational dynamics we have to consider moments so let's take moments about any point a now the point a may be fixed or it may move but we take moments on both sides for this equation about the point a mathematically that's done like this so you have the r cross matrix operating on the rate of change of the linear momentum on the left hand side and similarly r cross so here r cross is the vector from a to i is a position vector representing the position of i with respect to a expressed in the frame zero cross this is a skew symmetric matrix the structure of which we have already discussed earlier here we have the moment of the forces of the force on the ith particle about the point a and this is the moment due to all the uh, other particles the forces internal forces due to the other particles now when you sum up all these equations these moment equations for all the particles it will appear like this so you just place a summation sign before this and here you have the summation of the moments for the ith particle is given by the summation of the moments moment of the forces about the point a plus the resultant of all these moments added together and you can see that this term here becomes zero because when you take the moments about the point a for the force internal force acting on the ith particle it is it is countered balanced by the force on the jth particle due to the particle i which is in the opposite direction so these moments cancel off and you can consider any combination of particles and you will have this cancelling out so our left hand side can be expanded so we can write this position of the point i with respect to zero as position of a with respect to zero plus position of i with respect to a and you can differentiate with respect to time and you get the velocities that is equal to this term here so when you expand you get r cross so this is just the expansion of this now you see that this first term on the right hand side this term it becomes zero under three conditions it becomes zero under the condition that point a is fixed or moves with uniform velocity with respect to the inertial frame that means the this part here this part becomes zero because when the acceleration becomes zero the point a becomes either fixed or moves with uniform velocity the second condition is when point a accelerates towards or away from the center of mass that is when this term here becomes zero so when when you multiply this term by mi when you take it from here 
<coughs> you may take this term from here and place it here and yes so you are left with the rate of change of you are left with the rate of change of the velocity which is the acceleration and here you have summation of mi into this r cross i with respect to a so when point a accelerates towards or away from the center of mass so you can break the motion of this point i as r i with respect to the center of mass plus r of center of mass with respect to a so you can see that you can multiply this uh, with mi and then do the summation and when you do the summation you find that uh, the term cancels off one of the terms cancels off and this thing becomes equal to zero point a is the center of mass this is the third possibility so here when point a becomes the center of mass you can see summation of mi ri with respect to the center of mass so mi uh, this summation becomes equal to zero so you see this third condition is the most general of the three conditions as choosing a as a center of mass if you replace a by the center of mass let's call it c you will get this expression like this so so this is here you have the part which is left over here this part uh, has become this part zero here. when you consider the form a cross or derivative of b with respect to time is equal to derivative of a cross b minus derivative of a cross b you can uh, consider you can consider a cross as this matrix and dy dt of this so this can be taken as this here can be taken as b and so you can write it like this <coughs> now here you observe that this part becomes zero the reason is that here you have the velocity and here you have a vector which is proportional to the velocity because mi multiplied by this velocity is a vector the magnitude of which can be scaled but the direction is the same and so this is going to be a zero vector so you are left only with this particular term which is reproduced here and this shows you that it is the rate of change of the summation of moment of momentum momentum of the ith particle with respect to the center of mass and we can write it in uh, notation we can call this as uh, this this term here is called as the angular momentum this bracketed term here it is the angular momentum of the system of particles with respect to the center of mass or about the center of mass and expressed in the frame zero so the rate of change of this angular momentum with respect to time this is the left hand side when you choose a to be the center of mass and that is equal to the resultant of the moments about the center of mass moments of all the forces acting on the system of particles about the center of mass plus you can also add this term here now here you have the resultant of mom of moments now these moments they 
uh, we, we are representing here T moments. Now these moments are expressed in the frame zero, but you can see that each of these moments is, you can, you can write these moments, each moment as a combina combination of two equal and opposite forces separated by a distance, which we call as a couple. And it becomes immaterial about which point you're considering the moment of the couple. So you can see that the moment about which uh, about you're taking the moments for these for this forces which constitute this couple about which point that's not relevant and this gives us the uh, dynamics of the dynamics for rotation of the system of particles which is rate of change of the angular momentum of the system about its center of mass expressed in the frame zero is equal to the resultant of the moments of the forces about the center of mass expressed in the frame zero plus the resultant of all the moments acting on the system and you can see that when this uh, dynamics is expressed in the frame zero it has a form which is exactly the same as the newton's form formulation for translational motion except that now you are dealing with angular momentum about the center of mass there you are dealing with the linear momentum in our next lecture uh, well, uh, so far, uh, we have not brought in the idea of a rigid body. We were just we were just considering a system of particles. In our next lecture, we will impose constraints on this system of particles and then arrive at the dynamics of the rigid body.